In the second part of the hip joint biomechanics, we will learn about the line representation of moments around the hip joint. We will know how to calculate joint reaction force in the hip in a single instance and we'll understand and calculate the effect of cane in the opposite hand and weights in the same hand on joint reaction force. If O is the center of the hip and M is the midline sagittal plane and N is the point of action of abductors, then in a routine single extance, force generated due to the body weight Fw has a moment arm of A and the moment due to the body weight Mw is Fw times A. This is countered by abductor force which can be resolved into x and y axes and it's the y axis component or the FABY that helps to counter the pelvic tilting effect of the force of the body weight. From the previous video we know that this can be represented like this. The moment produced by abductors is hence FABY times B. At equilibrium, the pelvis is horizontal and the moments are balanced and therefore moments due to abductors and the body weight are equal. Expanding this, we can calculate the abductor force by multiplying Fw and A and dividing it by B. As we have seen from the previous video, the combined effect of the forces due to the body weight and the abductor action is borne by the joint and a vertical joint reaction force FJR is produced. And once again as we have seen previously due to the anatomical construct of the hip the actual joint reaction force FR is set at an angle of 30 degrees. Therefore FR is FJR by cos theta. Let's now put some numericals and solve a typical hip joint reaction force problem. Please pause the video and read the question. The force exerted due to the rest of the body can be taken as 500 newtons. The distance between the center of the hip and the sagittal plane is 15 centimeters. The distance between the joint center and the point of abductor action is 5 centimeters. Now we need to calculate the abductor force and joint reaction force. Let's solve the first part of the problem. At equilibrium, the moments are equal, and therefore, expanding the moments, we get force due to abductor times its lever arm B is equal to force due to body weight times its lever arm A. Force due to abductors is therefore 1500 newtons. Coming to the second part of the problem, if we add force due to body weight and force generated by the abductors, we get the vertical joint reaction force and it is 2000 newtons. In order to get the actual joint reaction force, we need to use the trigonometric solution. We divide 2000 newtons with cos theta, where theta is 30 degrees. And hence, this gives us 2309 newtons. Let's now see the effect of holding a cane in the other hand on the joint reaction force. If a force of about 100 newtons is applied through a cane held at a distance of about 50 centimeters, then it produces a moment that opposes the moment due to the body weight like this. Now, there are three forces producing three moments acting on the hip. Moment due to the body weight, moment due to abductors, and moment due to the cane. At equilibrium, the combined moments of abductor and cane is equal to the moment of the body weight. With simple mathematics, we arrive at an abductor force of 500 newtons. 
Note that the vertical joint reaction force exerted by the body weight and the abductor contraction is opposed by the force exerted through the cane. Therefore, the vertical joint reaction force is force due to abductors plus force due to body weight minus force due to cane, which is 900 newtons. The actual joint reaction force is 900 by cos 30, which is 1040 newtons. In summary, moment produced by a cane opposes the moment produced by the body weight and hence the net effect is reduction of the abductor force necessary to keep the pelvis horizontal and net reduction in joint reaction force. Let's now see what happens if the weights are held on the same side as that of the hip. The moment produced by the body weight is opposed by the combined effects of the moment due to abductors and the handheld weights. So, the given data is force due to the body weight is 500 newtons, body weight lever arm 15 centimeters, abductor lever arm 5 centimeters, force due to weights is 30 newtons, and the lever arm of the weights held is 20 centimeters. Now, we need to calculate the force generated by the abductors and the joint reaction force. I will leave you to pause this video and do the calculations yourself and will give you the solution at the end of this video. Let's quickly summarize the ways to reduce the joint reaction forces. We can either reduce the body weight moment or aid the abductors. Body weight moment can be reduced by reducing the body weight itself or medialize the center of the hip. Note that this has a dual effect of improving the abductor lever arm by increasing the hip offset. Trochantric transfer during hip surgeries also produce a similar effect. We have also seen that providing additional moments like cane in the other hand or weights in the same hand also have the same effect. Now we will look into the solution for the earlier problem. Note that if carried on the same side, weights do help to reduce the hip joint reaction force. This is the end of part two of the video on hip biomechanics Thank you for watching.